guest is a brilliantly funny writer and artist whose work artist whose work has appeared in the National Lampoon, Esquire, and The New Yorker. A collection of his work, Hold Up, has just been published under the title Zany Afternoons. Welcome, please, Bruce McCall. Hi, Bruce. Pleasure to meet you, sir. Thank you very much for coming by. Uh, first of all, tell us uh, when someone would purchase this book or when they see your work, what is the, the kind of artwork? What is it done in? What is the... Uh, uh, the artists call it gouache. I call it watercolor. What is, what is gouache? It's just a mixture of paint and water applied with a brush. Uh, over pencil. Over pencil? Mm -hmm. Yeah, they're very, very detailed, aren't they? Your work is... Uh, yeah, it's uh, fairly finely done, but... Uh, uh, a lot of people work that fine besides me. That's commercial art. That's mm -hmm. a form of commercial art where everything has to be exactly so. Um, I just took that a step further in the satire. Yeah, and you also uh, write all of the copy that goes along yes. with the book. Yes. And uh, do, you, do you think of yourself more of an artist or a writer? Or is a it writer. Similar skills. A writer who yeah. draws. Editors love a writer who can draw because it solves the assignment problem. They just buy the, they buy the whole package. Yeah. And uh, is, there, is there a theme running through this book? Nonsense. Okay. Uh, now we're getting somewhere. Let's let's take a look at some of the work contained herein. Uh, now, as I understand it, these are the originals, aren't That's they? That's the original art, yeah. So I better not screw this up. Oh, no. All right. Okay. Is it okay to lift this off? Why not? You can see it then. <laughs> I guess it would be pointless to yeah. get you out here and not even look at the stuff, wouldn't it? Okay, Bruce, what are we looking at? That's wing dining. Uh, which is um, wafting gently over France in the 50s and having your meal outdoors while all of France drifts by below and you can throw your buns over the side and <laughs> keep a paperweight on your papers and your menu. Now, uh, in, in the book you mentioned that Hemingway had a favorite, uh, favorite place on the... Yeah, outboard beyond the prop wash because uh -huh. the propeller can cause a lot of turbulence and uh, ruin your meal. But, uh, <laughs> so he would dine out there. Now, these, uh, this is, uh, in addition to nonsense, this seems to be written from the standpoint of people who had just money to burn. Is there any, any truth to that? Um, well, rich people can afford the technology that I show, I think, is the main reason for that. There isn't any particular uh, other reason. Okay. That's Jimmy Walker Field in, Cent what used to be Jimmy Walker Field in Central Park, where you'd come in along Fifth Avenue and land just in front of the plaza. Uh, it's been torn down since. Uh, this was done at the time, as you can see, when the Empire State Building was just being built. Oh, yeah. Uh, now, 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 this uh, this was a particularly scary approach to landing, wasn't it? It could be frightening, I think, yes. Yeah, yeah. You yeah. saw people above you as you landed. Yeah. Uh, that can be frightening. Now, what kind of aircraft is this? Is this an actual airplane? That's a Ford Trimotor, yeah. yeah. And that was an actual, that was an oh, early yes. workhorse. Yeah, that's not fanciful, that's... Um. All right, another scene from uh, days gone by in New York City, I believe, right, Bruce? This is the age of elegance. This is the Fifth Avenue subway, which was... <laughs> the Goulds and the Vanderbilts and the Rhinelanders all had their own stops, and uh, nobody else is allowed on it, and they serve champagne in the booths and leather-bound <laughs> novels for sale. But uh, it was very elegant. It's too bad it's gone. Yeah, it's sad to see that. <laughs> that way of life. Uh, it's a shame that that's a thing of the past. Yeah. All right. We uh, got time for one more here? Okay. Bless you. <laughs> okay. This is, a, this is a lost pastime from before World War I. <laughs> when Franz Josef or or one of the Austrian nobility would shoot zeppelins. <laughs> or dirigibles, as they're sometimes called. Uh, it was fairly easy to make a hit, but it took a long time to go down. <laughs> and to clean it up was a, a hell of a mess. Yeah. But uh, easier, than, easier than grouse, was that? The yes, yes. Yeah. They fell very gracefully, very slowly. Uh, okay. All right, we'll, uh, we have to pause here for a commercial. We'll uh, continue looking at uh, some more of uh, Mr. McCall's work from Zany Afternoon right after this. We're looking at some uh, pictures uh, from the book Zany Afternoons. Bruce, what is that? Uh, this uh, next few, these next few photos yeah. are, are drawings are from... Uh, the 1937 Ca Cairo World's Fair. Okay, great. Which was <laughs> forgotten, unfortunately. This is the building uh, 
put up by the cardboard industry called uh, It's a Corrugated World. <laughs> it, it blew away in a gale and they found it in Tunisia about three years later. It, it's all made of cardboard. But it was uh, quite the talk of the fair there yes. for a while. Yes. I remember reading about it. Yeah. All right, here again from the World's Fair. This includes the official symbol, which is a pyrimetrion, which is made of Bakelite, a material that you don't find too much anymore. Uh -huh. And unfortunately, it swelled during the day and you know, <laughs> shrank at night. And the rings kept slipping off. <laughs> the building uh, would actually expand yeah. and contract. And this yeah. is, uh, the figure in the foreground is Man the Robot, who uh -huh. was the official symbol uh, uh, of much of the fair. Yeah, and, and in, the, in the back there, we see Silly Town. Silly Town, well, the amusement park. Uh -huh. uh, what sort of things took place in Silly Town? Uh, giraffe rides and, and <laughs> local things. It was the Egyptian contribution. <laughs> local things. All right. And here, uh, this is the controversial. This is the musical firing squad from Afghanistan. Uh, uh, every hour on the hour, uh, wrote the whole fair. And always to music, huh? Always to music. Right. Afghanistanian folk tunes mostly. This is a nice pavilion. This is the Museum of the Hat. Um, every time a lady entered, it tipped. The whole derby on top tipped. Okay. You like airplanes. You seem to have a lot of airplanes in your work. Also automobiles. Mm -hmm. Well, I see a lot of them every day. I see a lot of airplanes. <laughs> it's easy to draw them. This is the airport uh, that looks like an airplane, uh -huh. which is unusual. Was this affiliated with the uh, World's Fair yes, also? Yes, that's how you got uh -huh. in and out. But it, it, and it was inaugurating airmail service from the fair to the rest of the world, but it costs uh, about $75 per letter to mail a letter. Uh, so they, not many people used it. Now this, again, is, is an actual aircraft. That's an actual aircraft, the Arc en Ciel. That's a, a French design that uh, never made it off the ground, as far as is known. Uh -huh. But and it's a real plane. What is, what is the background of the, I mean, how did it come to be a plane? Uh, about a 21-year-old genius in France in the 30s uh, designed it by public subscription, and they finally got a prototype built and uh, set off for Rio and got it about 300 yards down the runway when it uh, exploded. And that's a sad story of the Arc-en-Ciel. Yeah, it's and not it, a joke. It, it hurts production when that happens on the first flight or two. They... All right, again, and more from the World's Fair in Cairo. This is Digestorama. This is a. <laughs> A trip through a, a enlarged uh, human intestine. Uh -huh. <laughs> it's an amusement, right? Never forget amusement. Yeah. yeah. And folks go there after a big meal. Right. Yeah. All right. Now this uh, we're no longer at the fair. This is again the just the the lousy rich. This is for folks with yes. money rolling yes. out of their. Uh, yeah. What do we have? That's indoor golf. Uh, <laughs> uh, and the, the trick was not to hit the constable on the wall. And to try and not, to, and, and as a joke, try and uh, hit the ball off a suit of armor <laughs> at the other end, which you can't see because the place is so big. Yeah. All right. And something else. This is the biggest thing in the world, isn't the it? The biggest thing in the world. The biggest thing in all the world. That's the RMS Tyrannic. You uh -huh. can see this <laughs> city of New York in the foreground. <laughs> It was very large. Yeah, it's just plain big. Yeah. Right. If you were in steerage, you had to hurry because you couldn't find your berth by the time you hit New York, usually. <laughs> yeah, your uh, steerage passengers were advised to run, as I, yes, according to right. the book. That's right. Now, this is, uh, this is a dining room, isn't it? This or is one of, the, one of the first-class dining rooms, yes. Uh -huh. You can see the, the tables. Yeah. Uh, the skylight. <laughs> the right crowd and no crowding, they often said. <laughs> the right crowd and no crowding, yeah. yeah. Oh, this is great. Now, this is a car. That's the 1934 uh, Bulgemobile Air Dream sedan uh, going by a place where people are out of work. Uh -huh. and the headline is, Brother, Can You Spare a Glance? <laughs> even if you're out of work, you'd admire those lines. OK, and let's see. Let me, let me get to this one. Oh, it's the last one, so we will get to it. Tell us what we have. This is a, uh, a postcard from an establishment in Los Angeles, right? It's a Bruce? steakodrome, yes. This is a restaurant where you can sit and watch cars f r roll around overhead <laughs> in centrifugal force. <laughs> it was noisy, but there was nothing else like it. <laughs> well, that's the, that's the important thing, as long as nothing. And uh, the little owner says, quite some place, only one car running the night we were there, but what a racket. Very nice. <laughs> steakodrome.
Wonderful stuff. Bruce McCall. Thank you very much, Bruce. We'll be right back. Hotel accommodations for most guests of Late Night with David Letterman furnished by Berkshire Place, a Dunphy Classic Hotel, in exchange for this announcement. For reservations at Dunphy Hotels in the U.S. and Europe, call toll-free 800-228-2121. Thank you. We're uh, out of time. Uh, Jerry Seinfeld, uh, Seinfeld rather, who was supposed to be here tonight, I'm awfully sorry we ran out of time. We will see to it that Mr. Seinfeld is back soon. I want to thank uh, Bruce McCall for being here, sir. Thank you. And also Madeline Kahn, Paul, and uh, Bill Wendell, and the folks in the band. And what an audience. We'll see you tomorrow night. Thank you. Thank you.